Scotty! What a pleasure to be in your home again. I am so excited to see you. I hope you're all using your superpowers. If you remember, there are quite a few. There's the superpowers of words of life, reflecting God, being honest, comforting people, forgiving others, just loving. And remember, the biggest superpower of them all, the one that makes all of them possible, the superpower of choice. You are always making choices, whether to make the right choice or the wrong choice, whether to use your superpower or to let it go and choose not to use that superpower. We are given powers of choice by God and he tells us to choose. He lets us choose and he asks us to choose life every single day. Guess what? No, you're never going to guess. No, never mind. No, no, don't worry about it. But, well, I mean, okay, just, just guess. Okay, okay, okay. There is another superpower that we're going to talk about today. I know, it's crazy, but I'm going to give it to you in just one word. Joy. But to understand joy, we must first start at the beginning. So if you could go with me to the beginning. I know, right? So many visual effects I've got going on here. God is so big. He is so big. Honestly, guys, I don't say this just to be cute. I'm serious. He is so big. He is so powerful. He created and sustains and loves all of us and everything from the stars to the world to our breath to our life to our relationships to our nuts to our plants to the sunshine streaming in to our in our windows he is so big and powerful he knows all of it he holds all of it and he provides all of it he is so big and so powerful he loves us so much and that's why we listen to him and we do what he says right put out our hands because we're doing what he says we are using our hands to serve our god i'm wondering do the people in your life hope do they people in your life hope that you're happy or that you're sad now, that might sound a little bit like a trick question, but if you're having a hard time with it, think about it this way. When you're feeling sad, do the people around you push you away or use mean words at you or try to make you feel even worse or ignore you? Okay, well, if we're totally honest, we can say that yes, sometimes people around us make mistakes just like we do. Everybody makes mistakes, right? That's where forgiveness comes in. But usually, mostly, as a rule, what do the people around you do? I've got a pretty good guess that what they do is they see you're sad, and they stop, and they look at you, and they say something like, are you okay? And guess what, my friends? Those words are words of life. We talked about that in the last lesson. Words of life, they're so important. But we have to remember that when we're hearing those words of life, that is, they're asking because they care. They're asking because they want you to be happy, right? Here's the really super important part. God wants us to be happy too, but not just happy. He likes it when we're happy. Of course, you know, that's a good thing to be happy, but he's got the biggest and best heart full of love. He is love. And so he doesn't just want you to be happy. Remember, God is that super big, super amazing, wonderful creator of heaven and earth. He is our father. And he has the same desire for us to be happy, but even better. See, happy 
is a word that means that you're feeling pretty good about things because things are going your way in the moment. Like, happy is something we can feel when it's your birthday or when you just got a, um, a new present or when you just won a game or when you get to visit somebody that you love a lot. God likes us to be happy, but the thing he really wants us to have is that word we talked about in the beginning, remember? Joy. Yes, joy. Joy is even better than happiness because happiness happens when things are going our way, but joy is a fruit of the Spirit. It is given no matter what's going on around us. It is something that can live in us and be in us and be a part of us just because we are God's people. It's a gift he gives us on purpose because he wants us to have joy. It's that feeling deep down inside. It's actually not even a feeling. It's, it's, a, it's a knowledge. It's a knowing that it's go, deep down inside that it's going to be okay even when things are not going the way that we want them to. Even when things around us are hard, joy is knowing somewhere deep down inside that God loves you and he's got you and he knows you and he loves you and he wants you. And that is why we can have joy the creator of heaven and earth, the one who gives us every breath, the one who died and rose again. He loves us. He gives us cheerfulness, calm, and a delight. And he shows us this love time and time again when he provides for our needs. He comforts us. He protects us. He shows us his holy days. He gives us his Sabbath. He gives us each other. He provides for everything that we could ever, ever need. In fact, in his Bible, God talks about how he protects us like a mother hen or mother bird protects her children. Have you ever seen a picture of a bird kind of up on her nest and she's got under her wing, she's got her little chicks and they're like, beep, 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 beep. right? And the mother bird is, you know, she's got them all nestled in. Okay, well, listen to this. Psalm 63, 1 through 7. And let's see what we can, if we can pick out the point where we know where God is doing this for us. You, God, are my God. Earnestly, I seek you. I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you in a dry and parched land where there is no water. Okay, so that first part actually doesn't remind me of a bird. It actually reminds me of a deer. Anybody think of the song I'm thinking of? As the deer pants for the water, so my soul longs after you. Yes, yes. As the deer pants for the water, so my soul longs after you. Okay, so we haven't gotten to the bird yet. Let's, let's keep going. I have seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and your glory. Because your love is better than life, my lips will glorify you. I will praise you as long as I live, and in your name I will lift up my hands. I will be fully satisfied as with the richest of foods. With singing lips, my mouth will praise you. Even on my bed, I will remember you. I think of you through the watches of the night because you are my help. I sing in the shadow of your wings. We are in the shadow of his wings. We are sheltered and protected and helped by him, the big, glorious, wonderful, magnificent God, creator. And because he helps us and loves us, we remember him and praise him and love him back. He loves us so much. And it's this love that he has for us that has led us to a joy inside that can stay there even when we just dropped our piece of cake on the floor. Right? Oh, 
or when we just fell off the couch and bonked our head and now we've got a big old bruise. <laughs> Conk. Oh, ow. Oh. Or when we hear that someone we love is very sick. Those things can make us feel bad and sad and maybe even cry. But with the superpower of joy, we can have the assurance deep down inside of us that it's going to be okay, no matter what is happening, even when something in our lives is going wrong. And you know what? Having that knowledge, that assurance, that ability to trust God that he's gonna keep his word and give us that joy, that's something to sing about. In fact, for our brain break today, I am not going to be an animal. Nope. <laughs> I, we are going to sing a song. We're going to sing it one time normally, and then the next time we're going to do some fancy schmancy movements to get your blood pumping. So the first time, pay more attention to the lyrics. The second time, pay more attention to your body. Okay? The fruits of the Spirit are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, and goodness. The fruits of the Spirit are faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Holy Father, fill me more like Jesus, may I be living only for his glory, telling others about him. For Jesus is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, and goodness. Jesus is faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Whew! If you learn that song, you can actually sing it as a round. It's really cool. Okay. This time, we're gonna add some movement. So get in there, kiddos. Are you up out of your seats? Are you ready to move? Here we go. We're gonna go up, out, across, and out. That way. Front, okay, up, <laughs> front, across, and out. Ready? You gotta follow me. Are you ready? Are you sure? Totally ready? Okay. Here we go. The fruits of the spirit are faith. See, I already messed up. Ready, ready, ready? The fruits of the spirit are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, and goodness. The fruits of the spirit are faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. <laughs> Holy Father, fill me more like Jesus. May I be living only for his glory, telling others about him. Cause Jesus is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, and goodness. Jesus is faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. <sighs> all right, I was gonna make it like faster and slower and things like that, but it was all I could do to keep my hands going in the right direction. I hope you guys had fun with that. All right, now, we're going to change gears a little bit. Now we've got our blood pumping, our brains are ready. Let's snuggle in together and have a story time. Once upon a time, there was a plate of delicious, yummy, unleavened bread. In fact, my favorite unleavened bread treat. Okay, I know, we're not in days unleavened bread anymore, but still, I can taste the yummy treats. Well. Once upon a time, there was a plate of my favorite unleavened treat. I looked at it and my eyes got wide and my mouth got ready to eat the yummy, yummy, delicious goodness. Just as I put out my hands to grab the plate for myself, I heard someone say, ah, ah, ah. I looked up and there was my mama looking at me. She knew exactly what I was about to do, and she knew she had caught me just in time. What do you think you're doing? She asked. Um, I knew that if I lied, my mom would know. Because moms usually always know everything. So I decided to tell her the truth. They looked so good. Yes, they do, don't they? I'm excited for them too, but if I ate them all, then you wouldn't have any. 
And when I saw you sad, that would ruin the specialness of the treat for me. I bet if you ate all of them, you'd have that same sick feeling as you realized that now everyone else would miss out on the special thing to eat. Of course she was right. Mothers are usually always right. But Mama, can't I have just one now? I looked at her with pleading eyes. She returned my own look with a twinkle. Well, I suppose you could, she said, but then you wouldn't get one at dinner with the rest of us while we're enjoying ours. You see, eating them now will bring you happiness. It will make you feel good for the moment, but being patient and remembering others will bring you joy. A cheerful calm inside that comes from waiting for the proper time and doing things in the proper way because that's what God does, and joy lasts much longer. She paused as if to think about what to say next. Then she looked at me again and said, that joy can be yours because you know you were looking out for others and living the two great commandments. Do you remember how they go? Oh, of course, I said, and I started reciting. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, strength, and mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two hang all the law and the prophets. I could tell she was pleased with my remembering something I'd learned last year, and that made me feel good. Yes, when we live the two great commandments of loving God with all our heart, strength, and mind, and loving others as ourselves, we are putting ourselves last. Want to see something really neat? She got out a piece of paper and a marker. Sure, I said. Watch this. Now, just a minute, and I will really let you watch this. I didn't forget to get a marker, if that's what you're thinking. Watch this, she said. If you put J-O-Y on a piece of paper like this, then they tell you what should be first in your life in order to have real joy. J for Jesus, Jesus first because God gives us all good things and we are commanded to love him first and most. O for others, others next, because we are commanded to love them as ourselves. And Y for yourself, yourself last. Now, listen, my dear, you are last, but you are also important because you have to make sure you're okay too. Taking care of your things, um, getting enough sleep and food and to stay clean and have good manners. You have to know those things. Otherwise, how can you love others as you love yourself? So take care of yourself, but remember to have real joy, you have to put Jesus first, others second, and yourself is last. That's what brings you true joy that will stay. All right cool story, right? And it has a good point. It really points out that it's important to take care of our bodies and our hearts, but we must remember God and others too, right? These, that's the two great commandments all over again. It's the same thing, just in different words, right? Um, taking care of others is love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus first. The first commandment is Love the Lord your God with all your heart, strength, and mind. Love others as yourself, right? Love your neighbor as yourself. All three of them are in the two great commandments. It's pretty cool. Okay. You know what? I would love to hear from you this week. How about you take a moment to have someone in your family write down a moment where you chose joy in the comments below? 
you know, a moment where things were kind of going iffy and you had to make a choice whether you were going to melt into a puddle of sadness or whether you were going to be okay with it and roll with the punches and choose to have that deep down feeling of, you know what, it's going to be okay. Or maybe you could write down a way that you put God first, others second, and yourself last. I think as we continue to stick closer to our homes, we can all encourage each other if we share our victories and triumphs. So go ahead, write something in. I'll give you some time. Do, 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 Thank you. I really appreciate you sharing something with us. And now, a special moment, a special message from your classmates. First Thessalonians 5.16 Rejoice always. Rejoice always. Rejoice always. Rejoice always! All right, it's time to start winding down. Children, I have really appreciated you being here with me today for this lesson. I've got just a couple things that I hope that you remember. Can you help me keep track of them with your fingers? Good. Number one, the ability to choose is the biggest superpower that we're given. Number two, we need to be sure that we choose life. Number three, happiness is the feeling you have when things are going well, like when it's your birthday. Number four, joy is what you can choose to have even when things aren't going your way. Number five, true joy happens when we remember J O. Why? Number six, uh, you know what? If I'm going to my other hand, I have too many of these points. Number seven, choosing from the choosiest choice is the choicest choice because you have to choose choosiness as a choice. Number eight, back, another point. Number nine, remember, joy is a choice. And number 10, also, <laughs> All right, I'm glad I'm out of fingers, and I bet you are too. Parents, there's a couple printables down below in the um, description box, so go check those out if you like. If either one of them, maybe one or both of them, will help you in the weeks to come. And I am so glad that you guys came with us today on this journey of joy. As always, let's go ahead and end with prayer. Almighty Father God in heaven, I thank you, Father, for these children that are listening to this message. I ask that you please be in their hearts, that you keep them safe and open and soft and ready to listen to your words. Please help your words to go there and take root and, and produce fruit in their lives. And we know that your fruit is for our good. And it is so beautiful because against such there is no law. Your fruit is allowed to grow and there are no laws that say that they are not. Um, I am so thankful, Father, also for these families that are working so hard to take care of these children and all of us together are your family and we love you so much, Father. We lift you up on high. We praise your name. We glorify it. We thank you so much for this special day that you have given us. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. All right. Thank you for joining me for this very special youth instruction lesson. I am so glad that you are who you are. And I'm glad that God is so big and powerful and that he knows your name. Remember, God loves us so much. And that's why we listen to him and we do what he says. See you next time.